start today? Is it a continuation of yesterday? No, 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 I'll fill you in, don't worry. <laughs> no extra charge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines down on Samech Dalet. Gemara Pesachim Dav Samech Dalet. The second one dedicated by Shalom Ben Yaminov. Le'edu Nishmat Beriyam Bat Zilpat. Ba'edel Ha'im Tumim Refua Shalom Ben Yaminov. Bat Ima Shalom. Ve'latzlachat B'nei Mishpachto. We begin today's Dav on Samech Dalet. Amur Dishom with ten lines down. Rabbi Yehuda Omer Afatamid. Let's review what we're talking about over here, Rabotai. We're in the Mishnah. The Mishnah is talking about the Isur of having Hametz, owning Hametz at the time that you store the Qurban Pesach. The Pasuk says, Lot Tishchat al Hametz Dam Zivchi. So we had different she taught in the Mishnah to what extent this halacha applies. So the Biyuda said that even if they slaughter not only the Qurban Pesach, but even if they slaughter the Qurban Tamid on Erev Pesach, and there's Hametz in the possession of the Shohet or of the Mechtir, so therefore, it's going to be uh, part of the Isud. Not only the Qurban Pesah, but even the Qurban Tamid. So the Gemara says, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Afa Tamid. Mai Ta'mad Rabbi Yehuda, Amar Lecha, Zivhi. says, Lo Tishad al Hametz. Dam Zivhi. Zivhi means my Zivah. Zivah hami yuhad li. The Zivah that is exclusive to me. Umay nihu, Tamid. And what is the Zivah that's exclusive to God? That's the Qurban Tamid that we bring every day. So that is the Shita of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Shimon Omer, HaPesach Be'arba'a Asar. Okay, now let's get Rabbi Shimon Shita. It's the next Shita that's stated in the Mishnah. Rabbi Shimon makes a difference between having Hametz on Erev Pesach and having Hametz during Cholamoed Pesach. So he says like this, on Erev Pesach, the only Qurban that's going to be subject to Lotish Hat al Hamid Zab Zibhi is Qurban Pesach. Erev Pesach is Qurban Pesach. However, during the rest of the week, all the other Qurbanot are going to be subject to Lotish Hat al Hamid Zab Zibhi. And if you bring any Qurban during the week and you have Hamid in your possession, you get a Isu. On Erev Pesach, there's only one Qurban you can be liable. And that's what? The Qurban. Pesach itself. Let's read Rabbi Shimon in the Mishnah, just so you get a shita clear. Rabbi Shimon, I'm reading on Samech Gimal, Abu Dishon in the Mishnah. Ha-Pesach be-arba'a asar l'shmo hayav. If you bring the Korban Pesach, l'shem Korban Pesach, which means it's a kasher Korban, and you have Hametz in your possession, you're going to be hayav. V'shelo l'shmo, if you want the Korban Pesach, on Erev Pesach, shelo l'shem Pesach, which means the Korban is pasul, so therefore it's not a legitimate Korban. Even if you had Hametz in your possession, you're going to be patur. Ushar kol azevachim, on Erev Pesach, all other korbanot, meaning shelamim and so on and so forth, ben lishman, ben shelo lishman, patur. So again, the only korban that one is hayab, if he has Pesach in his possession, on Erev Pesach, is a korban Pesach, leshem Pesach. Uba mo'ed, ba mo'ed meaning on the rest of the days of the holiday, lishmo patur. If you brought a Korban Pesach, the Shem Pesach, on Olam, where it's Pasul. So therefore, you're not going to be subject to the laws of Lot Tishat al Hametz. However, Shelol Lishmo, what happens when you slaughter a Korban Pesach? Shelol Lishmo, Shelol Bismano, it becomes a Shelamim. Oh, so it's a Shelamim, and you have Hametz in your possession, you're going to be Hayab. Anyway, that's the Shita of Rabbi Shimon. Now let's see where he gets this from. The Abraham comes along and says, My time at Rabbi Shimon. Dikhtiv zibhi zibhi today zimne. We have two times that it says the word zibhi. So the Gemara here is going to do some construction. The Gemara is going to take one of the yuds of one of the zibhis and pull it out, and it's going to add it to another zibhi. So now it's going to really be read zibhai, and the other word is going to be read zebah. Don't ask how we can do that. I'm going to have a license to do that. We're going to take one yud and we're going to pull it out. And we're going to put it by the other. So now you have two words. Not tishhat al hametz dam zebah. Not tishhat al hametz dam zebahai. So how are we going to make this dinner? So we're going to say zivri zivri trezimne. Kari be zebah. One word read zebah. And read it one word zebahai. Lemay il cheta palginu rahmana mehadadi. Why did it split it? And one you're reading it zebah and one zebahai. Why did you say Why did you say Why did you have to split it? 
לא מחייב הזבחי, בזמן דלק הזבח מחייב הזבחי. מה עוד החידוש? What's the זבח? ואמרתם זבח פסח. The זבח is פסח. זה פסוק סס. When there is the מצווה of זבח, which is when ערב פסח, then you're not חייב על זבחי. You only חייב on the זבח, which is פסח. בזמן שאין זבח, when is in זבח, על חול המועד, there's no פסח, קורבן פסח, then you're going to be חייב on זבחי. You're going to be חייב on the other קורבנות. If you have חמץ in your possession. So the גבר is being דורש two ways. בזמן שיש זבח, היינו ערב פסח, שיש קורבן פסח, you're חייב, only on the קורבן פסח. And you're not going to be חייב on זבחי, on the other קורבנות. בזמן שאין זבח, then already you're חייב on זבחי, the other קורבנות that you're going to bring. הבנתם? No, 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 we're discussing over the issue of the Lord Tishchat al-Hametz. We're talking about where you brought a korban and you have Hametz in your possession. Bring whatever korban you want. The point is, if you had Hametz in your possession and you brought the korban shilamim on Pesach, you'd be hayav. On Erev Pesach, you'd only be hayav if it was the korban Pesach lishma. Anyhow, read the Rashi over here. We have anybody reading Rashi? David is with us? Perfect. Perfect. And it teaches me all Korbanot. No, because what's make a chiluch between Pesach and the other Korbanot. Ere Pesach and Pesach. No ma'al. No ma'al l'cha, b'zman di'ik ha'zebach, da'haynu Pesach ve'ad ba'azad, lo mechaya b'sha'ar zebachim. Beautiful. Chazak ha'baruch, Rabotai. Beautiful reading. Now, Rabotai, let's go continue. U'bamo'ed l'shmo patut. Let's go back to what Nabi Shimon said. When you bring a Korban Pesach, l'shem Pesach, on Erev Pesach, it's kashir, that's what you're supposed to do. But if you do that same thing, a korban pesach, leshem pesach, bechol ha-mo'ed pesach, it's pasul. Because there's no such thing as korban pesach, leshem pesach, bechol ha-mo'ed. However, we learned, if you brought it, shilol leshmo, if you brought the korban pesach, leshem shelamim, during hol uh, ha-mo'ed, it becomes a shelamim. Which is shilol leshmo, you uprooted the pesach from it, and you put it shilol leshmo, now it, it's kashir. The question of the Gemara is, what if you didn't uproot it? Because there's two extremes. There's Leshem Pesach and there's Shelo Leshem Pesach. That's uprooting it. What about Stam? I don't have any Kabbana. Stam? No, the Korban Pesach. The Korban Pesach on Holam Ed. I brought it Stam. So we want to know what the status is. So the Gemara makes a diuk. Ta'amad the Shelo Leshmo. The only reason why it's Kashed is because you uprooted it. Shelo Leshem Pesach. Has Tama Patur. Sounds like stama is going to be patur, meaning because it's going to be pasur the korban. Therefore, you're not going to be hayav and not tishchat al hametz dam zebchi. That stam is going to be even the shem pesach itself. So the Gemara says, "Am I pesach b'shad yemot tashana shelamim ave?" Normally, it's automatic that pesach when you bring it b'shad yemot tashana, it automatically turns into a shelamim. Are you telling me shmat mina? Pesach b'shad yemot tashana ba'e akira? It's a question. Are you telling me that it's not enough? You need an akira, you need it to make it shalol nishma, that stama is not going to be enough? That's not so. That's not so. The law is that automatically when you bring a korban Pesach b'shad yemot tashana, it's a shalamim. So why is the gemara be a mashma that you need to, okay, that l'chaura should be enough? Stama. So the gemara says, you're right. Amar abhiyah bar gamda. The answer was thrown out from the rabbis and the habura and the group. <clears throat> this is an exceptional case. Really, normally, if you bring a korma pesach minastam during the rest of the year, it's a shalamim. Stama is enough. You don't need to be okay. But in this case, you need to be okay. Why? It's a special case. Kegon, shayu ba'alim temeemet. Yad a korban. Korban Pesach. And what happened? The owners became Temeemet. So they were not able to bring that Korban Pesach on Pesach. So what happens to this Korban Pesach? It's pushed off the Pesach. Mm-hmm. So it's still Omed Menastam. It's still Omed for Pesach. It's going to be brought on Pesach 
שני. So such a קורבן needs an akira. ונדחין לפסח שני, דסתמן לשום פסח כהיר, a regular קורבן, that it's a פסח, it's not עומד לפסח שני, it's not מעשה של עמים, but this קורבן the only became תמה. So therefore he's still using this קורבן. What is he going to use it for? A month later. You're down at Iyad. So therefore in that case of the Gemara says, Dabka, if he makes an akira, it'll be kashir l'shlamim. But if he does not, it'll remain a korban pesa. Read Rashi, hastama patur. Melo tishchat. Te'amiyam kol kama te lo akad shem pesach minehu pesach. Tushchato bishad nimot ha-shana. Hu pasur. Hu shakita shena nehu yahi. The Gemara says, ba'e akira. Velo amina tame shalamim hu. Rishon ba'ayahu. Kilomar. Hashtina ma mehacha o lo. So the Yabra says, no, you don't have a proof from over here. I can really tell you that what? That minastama, it's a shlamim. But this was an exceptional case. Pia Habura. This was stama omed the Pesach Sheni, because the owners became temeim, so therefore it needs an. Akira Rabotai, we are now moving on to one of the more famous Mishnayot in Masechet Pesachim. We're now going to learn Seder Ha'avoda of Korban Pesachim, Shayu Osim Oto, Bezman Shabbat HaMikdash, Haya Kayam. So, Bezat Hashem, we'll read it, Unchalema Farim Sefatenu, HaKad Baruch Hu will make it, that this Mishnah will be able to fulfill this year, coming up Pesach, Yerushalayim, Irak Kodesh. Let's get to Yerushalayim first. Don't worry about the... Okay, but Nitin. Pesach, Nishchat, Beshalosh, Kitot. Pesach and Ere Pesach were slaughtered in three distinct groups. Shneema, Beshatu Oto, Kol, Kehal, Adat, Yisrael. So you see the Torah uses three terminologies. Mishnah, Kehal, Ve'edah, Ve'Yisrael. So there's halakha. You must split the people up, not evenly, but you have to have three groups. And we'll see exactly how these groups uh, were divided. They would open up the gates of the Azara. So Baruch Abba, group number one, uh, uh, first class. Baruch Abba, when they come into the Azara, azara. once the Azara becomes full, azara. they lock the gates of the Azara. That's it. Huh? The Azara is the courtyard of the Beit HaMikdash. Oh. They filled it up and then they locked the gates. Now, taku, heriyu, v'taku. Now they blow the tekiah, teruah, tekiah. Ha'kohanim, omdim, shurot, shurot. Now the kohanim would be in line formation. U'bidehem, bazikhe, kesev, u'bazikhe, zahab. They would be holding vessels to carry the blood. Some of them were made from gold and some of them were made from silver. Shura shekula kesef, kesef, veshura shekula zahab, zahab. They would have rows of the Kohanim. There was one row all of silver, one row all of gold. Velo ayu me'orabim. They would not mix them. We'll see why they don't mix them. Velo ayu lebazichim shulayim. These uh, receptacles do not have a base. They were pointy on the bottom. Shem me yini'um v'yikrash adam. We don't want the Kohanim to put them down. Because if they put them down as a base, the blood is going to congeal. So therefore, to keep the blood uh, liquidy, they made sure that the Kohanim are holding. When they're holding it, they're shaking. So therefore, there's no problem. Now what happened? Shachat Yisrael. We know that Shechita is Keshira Bezav. You don't need a Kohen to make Shechita. The Avodah of the Kohen begins in Kabbalat Adam. So therefore, Yisrael made the Shechita. The Kibel Kohen. Kohen grabbed one of these uh, receptacles and catches the blood from the neck of the animal. Now they have a conveyor belt. They pass the, because the Mizbeah is all the way far away. They're in the Azara. So they got to get this blood to the Mizbeah. So what do they do? They pass, they pass, they pass. They, they, each one hands it off, like the torch they have deal. They pass it off to the guy. Now, what happens? He receives the full and he gives an empty to the other guy. Because you have a, you have a, you're going two ways here. You need the empties to catch the blood of the Nush Korbanot, and you need the fulls to get to the Mizmaya. So first he gives the full, and then he receives the empty. Fine. The Kohen that's the closest to the Mizmaya, Zorko, Zidika, Ahat, Kenegada Yisod. The law, as we're going to see from the Pesukim, is 
Korban Pesa needs zirika. You don't sprinkle the blood on the corner of the Mizbeah. The only Korban that you sprinkle on the corners of the Mizbeah is Korban Hatat. All other Korbanot, either you make a zirika, throwing or shifika. We'll see when Pesukimah Korban Pesa is actually a zirika. So he takes the, uh, the, 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 the receptacle and he throws it and it lands on the Mizbeah and the rest of the blood falls into what's called the Yesod, which is the base of the Mizbeah. Yetzta Katlishona, okay? Katlishona is finished. They let them out of the Azara. Then they let in the second group. The second group leaves. It's the same thing. They repeat it three times, the same exact. And they have the compros of the coin. The same exact thing times three. Now, during the time of the Shaitat Kurban Pesa, they were reading the Halel. Now, Imgamru Shanu, if they were able to finish the Halil, they read it a second time until they are done the service. The Im Shanu, if they were able to read it twice and they're still working, Shilishu, they read it three times. Apalpi Shilo Shilishu Mimehem. They were so fast, the Kohanim, that they never read the Halil three times. By the time they finished the Halil the twice, the Azara was already finished with their Avodah. Nabi Yudha Omer, Mimehem Shilkat Shilishit, in the third group, which was the less people. Because already that's the last group. So therefore, in the third group, they didn't even finish it once. They didn't even get the in the first round. Because the Amaz Mu'atim. Because there were not so many people over there, so they were able to finish it quickly. Same thing. We know that Edipes are the fourth on Shabbat, like this year. They would make Shahita on Shabbat itself. The Shahita of Quran Pes is Dukhay Shabbat. The only thing that's not Dukhay Shabbat is what? It's Sliyah. The roasting is not Dukhay Shabbat. That they have to wait until Hazar Gabaru Filmot say Shabbat. But everything else was the same. They went in, they blew Shofar, they slaughtered it, Kabbalat Adam, throwing the blood of the Mizbaya. No roasting ever? If it's a Su, they never did it. What do you mean? No. What is it roasting on Shabbat? It's not allowed to roast on Shabbat. Oh, one thing that they did, the Kohanim, the rabbis were not happy. They would clean the Azara on Shabbat. What happened? There's all blood on the floor. There's all, uh, you know, uh, dirt, whatever, from the Abodah. So what did they do? There was, a, there was a stream of water that used to run in the Azara. What did they would do? They used to flow it. They would stop the flow so the Azara would fill up with water. And then they would unplug it, and all the water would drain out with all the blood. That they would do during the week, but they would also do it on Shabbat. It's not technically an isur. What are you doing? You're plugging the water. But the Achami felt you didn't have to make the stercha on Shabbat. Therefore, they were not happy with them cleaning the azara in this system on Shabbat. Before they would clean the azara, they would take a cup one of these uh, bazichim, and they would take blood from the floor. They would take one scoop of blood from the floor and throw it on the mezbeah. Just in case one of the bloods over here never made it to the mezbeah, so it had the blood of the ta'arobit all on the floor. So they say, no, this is for the one that we missed. <laughs> they take it off and throw it on the mezbeah. We know what do the hakamim. Hakim didn't like that. We'll see why the hakim didn't like it. Kanere, once it fell on the floor, you can't put it on the mezbeah anymore. Continue. Ketza, tolin, umafshitin. Now the next stage, after you make the shaita, you need to skin the animal. So the Gemara Mishnah tells us exactly how they made Hafshata. Un kaliyot shel barzel ayu kibu'im baketalim. They had hooks made out of iron that were in the uh, uh, walls over there. They had like blocks and they have the hooks on the walls and they would uba'amudim shebahem tolim and they would take the animal and stick it on the hook. Now it's hanging. And what happens? Umafshitin. And that's easy to skin it. Call me she'el no makom letot belavshit. And not everybody had a hook. So if you didn't have a, a spot over there to make afshata, maklot dakim b'halakim ayusham. That sticks. Smooth sticks. Meniyah al ketefo ba'al katef chabero v'tolei umavshit. What did they do? They took the stick. You have your friend stand next to you. They put the stick on the shoulder. And the other stick hanging on the, hanging on the other shoulder. Now they have a, 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 a pole. Now they stick the animal on the pole and they... They skin it. So that was if you didn't have a room on the wall. 
the B Eli, now before we turn the page, Rabotai, uh, I guess we should read the Rashi on the Mishnah. So we're going to ask our reader to read the straight. Go forward and read the Mishnah. A Pesach. I see this. Even if, you, even if everybody can fit in the first group, doesn't matter. The Torah says you need to split them into three separate groups. Even if there's, a there's enough for everybody in the first group. No, no, we tell somebody you stay outside. Why? We need you for the second group. You stay outside, we need you for the third group. It's a deed. Mazikhe. Okay, I don't know why, because Kohanim is a dizim. I don't know why you have to have, uh, normally we say Kohanim, we're not worried they're going to be lackadaisic. But over here it's saying, we're worried that they might put it on the karka, and if it's going to be uh, in the clash. Okay, we have to see. Here it is. There's the answer. There's the answer. We're worried. Normally we say, but it'll be such a hectic day. There's blood coming this way, blood going that way, thousands of kurbanot. We're worried that in the in the chaos of it, they might just put one down temporarily and forget it. They said, no, 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 we'll not let them happen over there. They're, 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 they're jealous. Continue. Okay, I don't know what she needed to, to make that one, but he, he went out of his way to tell me. Hadam. Okay, he received the Bazak as opposed to thinking. You could have said maybe Vikibel Adam or Vikibel Akrin from the Israel. Because I, if, I, if Rashid didn't tell me, I would have thought that maybe the Israel catches the blood and not Vikibel Akohen from the Israel. So she says, no, 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 no. He has to receive it from the neck of the animal. That's what she's coming to fix to me over here. Evantem? <laughs> Okay, I don't know why. He, why does he? Why, why does he have to receive the full first and then give back the empty? Why doesn't he give the empty and then receive the full? That would be the Gemara's question. Ah, he takes the the bazakh and he throws it from where he's standing. He doesn't sprinkle it on the corners of the Mizbeah. Why? Beautiful. Right. The only the Yisod did not go around the whole Mizbeah. It only went on the north and the western side. So therefore, he would have to sprinkle the blood on the side of the Mizbeah that there was Yisod, either the north or the western side. He would just throw it against the wall. What would happen? It would trickle down then into the Yisod. No problem. Right. Why does the Mishnah to say Kenegad the Yisod? If the Yisod was on four corners, it should just say Kenegad the Mizbeah. But since the Yisod was only on the northwest corner, the Mishnah has to say Kenegad the Stadim that have the Yisod. Kach. But each group would have to read the Halil. By the way, we, we have a, we, we follow this minhag today, by the way. Where do we follow this minhag? Those that bake matzot on Erif Pesach, which they bake matzot at the time that they used to bring the Korban Pesach. So at the time of the baking, they read the Halil. What? Yes, wow. in the Matzah Bakery, they read the Hallel at the time wow. in order to fulfill this minhag of uh, reading uh, Hallel yeah, on Erev Pesach. Yeah. That's a very, very old custom. The Im. The Im, Rabbu HaPesachim, Umashach, Suman Shahidatan, Ache Gamru, Ve'adayin, Abim Shohatir, Chosrim, Bekorin, Shriyah. Okay, they read it a second time. The Im, Shanu, Ve'adayin, No Gamra, Shahitat, Beshe, Otaka, Shushu, Shriyah, 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 Shriyah,
ואף על פי שלא אירע מעולם ששלשו, לפי שהיו שם כהנים מרובים ומהירים במלאכתם. לא הגיעו לאהבתי ולאהבתי, אפילו פעם ראשון. אלא שהכוהנים מדחין האזהרה, שאמת המים מהלכת באזהרה, וכשהם עושים להדיח האזהרה, חוקקים את הנגב בסיעתה, Right, what would they do? They would, plug, they would plug the water, and now the Azara would fill up. Instead of flowing out, it would fill up. And once it would fill up, they would unplug it, and all the water with all the junk would flow out. Now we do that during the week, which is a good system, but during Shabbat, I came and weren't happy. Marble, marble floor. Okay, I guess the Achim didn't have too much... But what does that mean? They, so they always, they, the Kohanim normally, like always, did not listen to the rabbis on this matter, like every year, that's what it sounds like? Even though the rabbis said no, they just did it anyway? Yeah, it's, 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 it's the Sheva to the Kohanim. They were worried about the, uh, you know, the cleanliness of the Beit HaMikdash, of the Azara. They felt it wasn't Kavot. Achimim, they felt... Uh, You know, it's a tircha, shelo de tzorech. But yeah, they didn't, uh, shalom, they didn't say shalom, that they were making the surah for shalom. Shalom is tzorech, I mean, they thought it was a tircha, shelo de tzorech. Okay, the kwanim, uh, they took it upon themselves, exactly. Midad, midam ataarovit. Hamutal al harisba, v'tama mefaresh begemara. Okay, we'll see why, why they took a, according to the Bible, they took a cup from the floor, and they threw it on the mezbah. We'll see why they did that. Unkaliyot, okay. Leave that, leave that, leave that. Okay, you can go right there. Okay, back to the Gemma Mishnah. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Rabbi Eliezer says, Yudale, then we turn to the Amud Ben, Shechal Yod B'Shabbat, like this year. Ere Pesach, Shechal Yod B'Shabbat. Maniyah Yado Al Katef Havero, Miyad Havero Al Katefo, Vetole Umafshit. He's over there, as she says, they could not prepare the sticks. Remember we said they had the hooks for the skinning. If you had a hook, you're lucky. But not everybody has a hook. So therefore, what they do? They have these sticks. For some reason, as she says, they cannot prepare them on Shabbat. Later on, the Gemara is going to tell us because they were muksir. So therefore, how are they going to skin the animal? They cannot uh, uh, take these uh, uh, sticks over there. So the explanation they say is they would take their hand and put it on their shoulder, the friend's shoulder, and their, hand, their friend will put the hand also. Now they create a, a stick from their hands. And now they take the animal, they put it on their hand, they have to be strong, And they have to skin it like that. So that's what it says. Uh, they would skin it themselves. Yado, read the top Rashi. Yato. Okay, I don't know why they... I, I, I don't, right, because... The Shash is bothered because the Gemara later on is going to say it's a Mokseh issue. So therefore, it's not a Tikkun issue over here. It's a letaltel issue. So the, the Rashash wants to make that she consistent with the reason that the Gemara is going to bring later on. Okay. Continue. The Gemara continues. Now, after you skinned it, now you have to take the insides of the Qurban and you have to put them on the Mizbaya. The stuff that's put on the mizbah is called what? Imurin. So it says, Karo, you ripped it. You skin, you, if you skin it, you rip the inside, the stomach open. Ve'otzi et emurat. You take the insides. Natno b'megis. You put it in a vessel. Ve'ktiran al gabea mizbah. And you put it on the mizbah. Yatsta kat lishona. Okay, the first group is done. Now where do they sit? This is Erev Shabbat. This is Shabbat now. Normally what would happen, we take, go roast. And then they can't roast because it's Shabbat. So they have to stay on the Temple Mount. So every group would have a location where they would uh, sit until Shabbat was over. So where would Kat Nishonah sit? They get their location, Harabayat. Shaniya Behel. There was another area on the Harabayat. It was called the Hel. And she tells you where that location was. Stays in the Azara. 
Hashra, once already it becomes dark, but the Shabbat, Yetzu v'salu et Pesachim. Now they go out and they wrote. So you can imagine about in such a different way than we have Pesach. You have Motzei Shabbat. When did they start to send it? I mean, they had to wait till 72 minutes till Shabbat was over. And now everybody starts roasting Korban Pesach. Now after you roast it, they have to go home. You have to take Korban Pesach. Uh-huh. Take it there. They didn't start to send it until... Uh, there were not too many Hanushim on the Haggadah about that. Because that did that Pesach before Hatzot. So they went there, uh, Arba Kosor, the Maror. It was very, very quick. Uh, different, different world than when they were living it over here. Now imagine, imagine Lel Pesach, you leave Shul. Where's everybody going? They're going to go barbecue now. Barbecue, we have to say that. That's the say that. The say that is to barbecue, to make a barbecue, to make a, a sleep. Yeah. Exactly. The Afi they had also. This was the Afi Koman. The Korban Pesach was the Afi Koman. This was it. I'm just saying it was a different world. We don't have any relation to what you used to do in the older days over there. From, uh, this year, for example, this year, maybe we'll do it this year. Right. This will be a case. It's, it's, it's on Shabbat. Right. Yeah. So on Shabbat, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you're not in Florida for Pesach. You had to be in Yerushalayim. The whole nation was in Yerushalayim. You cannot store the Pesach in the surf side. You have to store it in, the, in the Yerushalayim. So no such thing. Everybody's going to Yerushalayim. So you have hundreds of thousands of Jews like we're going to see in the Azarai Yerushalayim. Go find a place to stay. Go find a hotel. Go, you have to eat it. You have to be there. Everything. It's a different world. You can't imagine such a, such a, such a place. It's nice, but you when they see they see they see happen over there, all the people could be there in one moment and do the kibbutz for you. I'm not gonna tell you how many people they were. I'm not a bit hot, no matter. And a pesach nishat ela be gimel kito, like we learned in the Mishnah. The pesach is nishat only in three groups shel sheloshim sheloshim bene adam. Oh. And it sounds like the groups have to be of 30 people minimum. My ta'ama, how do you know three groups? Kahal, Eda, the Israel, like we saw in the Pasuk. Now the Gebarah says, Mesaf Kalan, we have a safik. Ibevat ahat, ibeze acharze. When you said 30, does it mean 30 per group? Or does it mean 10, 10, and 10 minimum? That's the Gebarah's safik. So the Gemara says, Hilkach, we want to hedge just to be safe. So what do we do? Ba'inad shalosh kitot shel shaloshim shaloshim b'nei adam. But we we paid insurance. We want three groups and each group has to have at least 30. So therefore, for sure, we're okay. De'i bevatachat, because if you tell me you need 30 in one shot, ha'ika, you have it. De'i bezeh harzeh, ha'ika. And if it's uh, uh, successive, you have it also. So therefore, 30 per group. The Gemara says, but you don't really need 90 people. There's the minimum amount of people to fulfill this halakha would be 50 people. Hilkach, bahamishim na mesagya. I can have 50 people. Da'ayle telatin. You let 30 people go into the first group. Ve'avde. Ayle asara. Then let another 10 come in. Ve'nafke asara. And let 10 from the first group go out. So therefore, you can still have, well, you'll have 30. And then you have 10 more guys outside, which means you start with 30. And then what? Let 10 guys leave and 10 new guys come in. You still have 30. Let 10 guys leave again. Let the last come in. You have 30 again. So with 50 people, you can uh, uh, make this, uh, with this adjustment. Look at that she over here. Right. Yeah, you have such also, so you, you're able to get both. Three kitot with 30 in each. Rabbi, why can't we do 30 and then 10 and then 10? Because you might need 30 per group. But you did there, let's say the first one you do 30. But the second one you also need 30. The second one do 10, and but then the next one do 10. So you covered both kitot. 10, 10, 10, 30. You didn't do once. it. The sec- now, who said once? 30 each. But uh, the 20, but the 20 are not doing it. Anyway. Doesn't matter, but you stuff 30 in the Azara. You need 30 in the Azara. Just to be there. Correct. Okay. All right, Rabotai, we continue. Now, there's a big question over here. After the cat went in the first group, 
it says in the Mishnah that they lock the doors. We're going to see over here two shitot. Some say they actually manually lock the door. And some say a miracle happened. That once there was enough people in the Azara, the doors closed automatic. If you have automatic doors, in the Azara, they had automatic doors without electric. It wasn't solar powered either. The doors closed miraculously. Once somebody bought the alarm, said, okay, there's enough people here, the doors closed. As long as the doors were open, they said, Baruch Abba, Baruch Abba. Once they see the stores start to close, said, so it's a mahluk, and if they manually closed it, or it was closed, let's read it inside. Itma. Abaye Amad. Nin'alu tina. Nin'alu sounds like it locked by itself. He learned in the Mishnah the word nin'alu, which sounds like it happened by itself, automatically. Nava Amar, no'alim tina. No, he learns it, no'alim, which they actually did it manually. My benayu, what's the difference between the two answers? Ika benayu le mismach anisa. Do we rely on miracles or not? Abaye Amar, nin'alu tina. Nin'alu means it happened by itself. You keep on filling the azara up until you can't you squeeze them in. And you rely on the miracle that the door will close by itself. You don't have to worry about, hey, we're not going to be able to close the door. What Allah will handle that for us. You just stuff the people in there and the door will close miraculously. You can rely on the miracle that the door will close. No, no, Alim. You have to close it manually. You cannot rely on the miracle. Therefore, when you start to see it getting crowded, you have to say Rabotai, Adkan, in order that you be able to close the door. Now, the Aditan, we have a Mishnah Masjid in New York. There was a great rabbi called Akavya ben Mahalal El. There's a big question over there. Did they put this rabbi in Nidui? Why would they put a rabbi in Nidui? They were teaching a certain halakha, and uh, he said something disrespectful regarding Shemayan Abtalyun. And therefore, the rabbis felt that that was disrespectful. So some say that they put him in Nidui. Some other rabbis say, Hasbe Shalom. They would never put a rabbi like this in Nidui. And we're reading now that opinion. The Mishnah says, Amar of Yehuda, Hasbe Shalom, She'akavya, Be'anamamin, Manal'el, Nittada. Hasbe Shalom, it never happened. They would never put such a rabbi like that in Nidui. You know why he was so great? She'en azaran nin'elet al kol adam be Yisrael. When the gates of the Azara and Erev Pesach were closed, and then there's hundreds of thousands of people there. There's nobody greater in the whole group than Akavya bin Malal He's trying to show you that he was the greatest man. We want to show you he was the greatest man. If you take all the Jews that were in the Azara and the door locked on Erev Pesach, he was the best one there. He was the, he was the, the, the biggest Sadiq there. How can they put him in Nidui? Now it says what? She'en azran nin'elet. That's the focus we want to get on the way. When, they, when the doors were locked, so each rabbi is going to learn it according to their opinion. That it happened miraculously. That it happened manually. When the doors miraculously were locked, there was nobody in the Azara like Akabya. He learns it that when they locked it manually, there was nobody in the Azara. So each rabbi learned it respectively. Just the, 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 there's one ashi, the, the ashi, I just want to read one ashi because I think I'm not ready for reading the ashi now. We're not ready for that yet. I, I, I'm the moderator of this. Uh, shi, <laughs> With all the respect, when we get to the ashi, when we get to the money, I didn't skip any yet today. Tanur banan. We have two moderators in this class. Tanur banan. Me'olam lo nitma'ech adam ba'azara hutz mepesach echad. Believe. Could you imagine how many tens of thousands of people with the Azara you have to be worried about the trampling? You ever see the Hajj every year? No, I don't know. The guys, they go, they trample each other. They all, hundreds of people die every year. You ever go to soccer matches? On the way out, they trample each other. And this happened that with all the tens of thousands of people that would go every year, it never happened that anybody got trampled, which you don't think they're for granted. It's a, it's a big miracle. 
Only once. In the times of Elisha's, one old man, he got trampled. They call that the Pesach of the trampling. They, they, they have a nickname of that year. Pesach Me'uchim. Harabanan. Pamachat bikesh agrifa samelech liten enav me'uchlese Yisrael. Agrifas wanted to take an account of how many Jews there are. How many people are coming for Pesach to Eretz Israel? They want to know how many people. Amar lek lekohen gadol ten enecha bepesachim. Do me a favor. I want you to count the pesachim. That's how you can figure out how many people. Count how many pesachim were brought. Natal kuliyam mikol echad. So he took the kidney from each animal and he, he put it on the side. Now at the end he'll count the kidneys and you know how many pesachim were there. There were 600,000 pairs of kidneys. That means they bought 600,000 Korban Pesach. Now, because 600,000 pairs is 1.2 million, because each one is uh, two. So therefore, it's double of the people that came out of Mitzrayim. Now, who it's not? Rabotai, this doesn't include Mitameh v'shiyah b'derek lechokah. It doesn't include the people that were Tamer, who couldn't bring Korban Pesach that year. It doesn't include the people that were far away, that could not bring the Korban Pesach. Those were only the people that showed up. Now wait. Each Korban Pesach is part of a group. So there's 10 per group minimum. So therefore, if you have 600,000 pairs, and you have times 10, so you have 6 million people that were bringing the Korban Pesach. They call that the Pesa Me'ubin, the thick Pesa, which means thick with people. The Gabbara says, wait, we're not too sure if this is halakhically correct what the Kwanin did to use the kidneys to count. So the Gabbara asks, Natal Kulya, they took the Kulya, Abae Akhtuna. What do you mean? They have to put that on the Mizbaya. You can't use the the, 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 the the kidney as an abacus, as a, as a counting uh, uh, mechanism. You have to put it on the mezbah. Yeah, but I says, the hadar maktilu. After, after they counted, they put it on the mezbah. What's the difference? They put it on after. Yeah, but I says, vaketiv, viktiro. Shelo ye'enav halabav shel zeh, bazeh. No, you cannot mix them together. Each one has to be separate. Each one has to put their halabim up together, which means in one shot. You can't now put all the kidneys of everybody else together. Yeah, but I says, yeah, they didn't put they didn't put six hundred thousand in one shot. They did one at a time. So they, each one was brought separate. They didn't mix them up. It took a long time. So the Gabara says, what do you mean? That means each korban you have to put all the stuff on them at the same time. You cannot put 95% of the meat up and then wait and bring the kidney up later on. So they brought, how did you tell me they brought it later on? Each korban has to be brought up. At the same time. Ela tefisa be'alma. No, it was just a holding place, which means he took the kidney and he lifted it up and he told the guy, okay, this is one. And then the guy took a rock and said, okay. He put the rock instead of the kidney and he threw the kidney on the mezbeah, which means this was just a signal to the guy who was counting. He had a pebble or a jelly bean, however they were counting with. Be'alma, the shakil minayu until he took another item to use it as so they didn't count kidneys at the end. The kidney was just he lifted up as a botai. Here's one. Then they throw it on the mezbaya. They got put a rock on the side. The and at the end, they, with, together with the whole korban. Okay, now that we got to the two dots, now let's go back and review what we just read. Let's start reading over here. Samchinan Anisa. <laughs> Now she comes along and says that the reason why we can rely on the miracle, look how you're going to have a problem. Because if you're relying on this miracle over here, that the gates are going to lock by themselves, maybe all the people are going to come in in one shot and you're not going to be able to fulfill the halakha of three groups. She said that no, we weren't worried about that. It could be so weak on the nest. That what? The nest is going to acquiesce to the halakha. And therefore, it'll know that you need to do two more groups. Therefore, it'll lock in order to keep you enough people outside in order to fulfill the shalosh kito. Shalom. 
and mashkin lo et hagiyoret velo et hamshuhetrere. They were talking about the sota waters. So one of the things he said was, you do not give a giyoret the waters of the sota. He had pesukim to prove that giyoret is not subject to the waters of sita. So they told them, amru lo. And so we're talking about there was two rabbis called Shemaya Vabtalion. There was a Giyoret called Karkamit, and they gave her the waters of the Sota. They asked Akavya. So what did Akavya answer back? Uh, uh, because they were Gerim. That's why they, they were also Gerim. So they were, they were covering up for the Gerim. Dukma. They, they, they were the same thing. He said something sharp against the Shemaya Vabtalion. Dukma. Period. So now, when the rabbis heard that, he did that again. He spoke like that against the rabbi of Talion. Did he do? Did he do? When they locked the gates in the Azara, with the tens of thousands of people, there was nobody greater in that Azara than him. So there wasn't Rabbi, him. Yes. The, the, when, it, when it says that, that, that he was the greatest in Yirat Chet, I was thinking on the Kehavot, the Mishnah that Akbaya Ben Mahalel says, is Takel B'Kimel Dibarin Be'en Adam Be'at Habal Da'abira. So it's exactly, that's his... That's his Midah. That, that's his item. Right. Beautiful. Where's that? Where's that Mishnah? I don't remember it. Okay, I have to remind myself. Remind me to look at it. Okay, pass on me. Okay, continue. Okay, so the guy, the old man got crushed. Right, a lot of people. Victor. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fool. A fool, a bean. Right, you put a bean or an even kidding down. Okay, it was, it was a placeholder. Okay, about that we continue. Kwanim omdim shurot. So we said that what the Kwanim would stand in rows. Right, one row of gold, uh and one gold of silver. Maita ama. Idima dilma shakle de dahaba umaile de kaspa, which means we're worried that he might give a gold one and get a silver. Now you can't do that because the rule is ma'alim bakodesh, the end muridim. You cannot give a hand in a gold and take a silver in its place. If you have gold already, you have to keep it, keep it gold, but you can't go down. So maybe that's why they kept the rolls separately. So they, well, they don't mix gold and silver. I mean, the silver is all silver, and the gold is all gold. The Gibran says, dilma bar matan bar me'ah. Even in the gold, there's different values. Maybe this gold is worth 200, this gold is worth 100. So you're still going to have the same, the same problem. So the Gibran says, Ela, that's not a problem. I'm not worried about if it's gold and gold, and it's just a different weight. That's not going to be the issue. The issue of this, so why, the, 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 why did you, and, and I'm not worried about if I'm not worried about gold and different values, so I'm not worried about gold and silver either. So therefore, why did you put them in separate rows? Ela the shapir It's just nice aesthetically. Aesthetically, when you see a row all of gold and a row all of silver, it just looks nicer. It wasn't a halakhic issue. Design. It was for design exactly. Read Rashi. <laughs> Right. You're, you're handing in a gold one and you're getting a new one of silver. Maybe that's considered Moridin. Ultimately, the government says it's not a problem of Moridin. Because if you're worried about that, then even though the gold and the gold you have to be worried about, maybe one is more expensive than the other. And the issue of it was aesthetic niceties. But that continues. Okay, so we said that these uh, these vessels did not have bases because we don't want the Kohanim to put it down and the, the blood will congeal. Rabbanan, all the vessels that were in the Mikdash, they didn't have bases. 
all the bazichi that they store different things in, in the Beit HaMikdash, they don't have bases. The bazichi levona was the frankincense, and they used to put that on the shulchan from week to week. Now there, they needed to put a base, because if they put shulai, they would have to lean it against something. And if they would lean it against the lechem apanim, they'd be worried that the lechem apanim would break, because it was very fragile, the lechem apanim. They were worried if they leaned the, the keli against it, it might break, it has to be shalem. So the Gemara says, uh, they worry that they might lean it against the lechem apanim, and the lechem will fall apart. So therefore, the only item that they had a base on was the bazichin of the levona. Shahat Yisrael vekibel kohen. It says, the Israel made shechita. Now, there's no law that the Israel has to make shechita. I mean, the kohen can make shechita if he wants. So the Gemara says, Lo sagya delad Yisraeli, uh, 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 which means, why? It can only be Israel. Why can't the Kohen do it? So the Gebarah says, no, no, of course the Kohen can do it. The Hadush is, he gufa kal kamash malan, the shaita bezar keshera. The Hadush is that even the Israel can do it. Of course the Kohen can do it if he wants, but the Hadush is that shaita is keshera bezar. The kibel a Kohen. Oh, and then what? The Kohen will receive the blood. That's dafka. The Kabbalah starts from the Kabbalah and onward. Not no Now, now what time? We have a big Hadush here. You pay attention. How is this blood getting to the Mizbeah? It's being handed off. It sounds like each coin is standing stationary in position. Now, even though one of the Abodot is, is Holachat Adam. Holachat sounds like the coin has to walk into the Mizbeah. Here we have a hadush. It sounds like holacha could be done stationary. Because each the dam is being moved, but the kwarim are not moving. Correct. It's holacha tadam, and you don't need holacha of the of the kwen. That's what it seems from our Mishnah. So the Gemara makes this point. Not no lachavero shmach mina holacha shelo beregel have ya holacha. From here it sounds like that you don't need a holacha beregel. It's just like you said. Well, the, the blood gets there, even though the kwarim themselves are not. Moving. The Gemara says, "No, you have no proof." Dilma hunayit purta. Maybe each coin had to move a step a little. Maybe they had to take exactly one step just to be yotze holacha. So the Gemara says, "Ve'ela ma'ika mashmalam." So then, if that's the case, what's the hadush of the Mishnah? Which is, if they were saying they were stationary, you tell me a hadush. The hadush is that you don't need a holacha. But if you tell me that they walked a little, so what's the with the Mishnah? They tell me they had a whole row of uh, Kwanim. It's the regular Holacha. They tell you that's the way we want you to do it. It's more, the more the merrier. Technically, you could have had a couple of Kwanim that are runners. You catch the butt, they run to the Mizbaya. But they say, no, we might need to do it this way. You have a whole line of Kwanim. That's the best way to do it because more. Glory to the king when you have this whole row. That's the Hadush. To do it in this beautiful way, a bit of Amadat Bele. Exactly. Kibele Tamale. So he says, the Kohen receives the full, and he gives the empty. So the Gibran says, why do you do it in that order? You don't give the empty first. Why? Amazing Hadush. You have a mitzvah zirika over here. So therefore, mm-hmm. take the full one, because that's the mitzvah to go to the mitzvah. Take the full one first. Don't skip over the mitzvah. And even though the empty also is for a mitzvah. I'm giving him the empty so he can catch the blood. Mm-hmm. But, but which is more direct? This is more direct. Here, the blood is here already. So therefore, don't skip on the mitzvah that's in front of you to go do a mitzvah that's secondary. secondary. So therefore, we learned the hadush of Emma Abidim al mitzvah, which is a tremendous, tremendous hadush. Okay, the Gemara comes along and says, what's the sevara of in ma'abidim ala mitzvot? Two sevara. In ma'abidim ala mitzvot can either be, it's not derich eretz. You have a mitzvah in front of you, you're skipping over it? Mm-hmm. What does this mitzvah do to you? It's, it's, it's a bizayot to the mitzvah, in ma'abidim ala mitzvot. As if you say, you're not a poor, I'm going to go do the other mitzvah. The other mitzvah gets embarrassed. What are you doing to the boys? Why are you skipping over a mitzvah? So it's inyan of bizayot. All the inyan is in ma'abidim ala mitzvot because who says that this mitzvah is going to be there when you're ready for it. What do you think? The mitzvah is waiting for you. <laughs> the train doesn't wait. The train more goes. So that boy says, okay, now I'm ready for you. The mitzvah is too late. Uh, it fell on the floor. Now you lost the mitzvah. So the mitzvah is the inyan, so you don't lose the mitzvah. 
because the satan is mekatreg. What do you think? The satan's gonna let you have the mezvah when the mezvah is in front of you. Grab it quickly before somebody uh, before somebody somebody takes it. Lavdi, lavdi. If there was a hundred dollars on the floor, and the shooter abim, you come okay. You know what? Let me tie my shoe first, and I'll go get it. Uh, by the time you go get it, this, you think it's gonna be there? Hundred dollars. Someone's gonna take it. Therefore, when it comes to that, you know how to take it right away. So the mitzvah is the same thing. When the mitzvah is there, at the hamisera, we learned yesterday's parasha, which partim et hamatzot, right? What did it say? Mitzvah ba'al yadecha, at the hamisera, which is the same inyan of en ma'abini. Rabotai, we're finishing the gemara now. Kibel et hamale, okay. Kohen hakarov etzel hamizbeya. So it says what the kohen that was the closest to the mizbeya takes the bazach and he throws it. Now there's different ways you could sprinkle. One way is to throw it. And one way is to be shofich. Sometimes it says v'shafach, and sometimes it says v'zarak. Over here, obviously, the law must be v'zarak, because the Mishnah said v'zorek. Man tana pesah b'zrika. Who is the opinion that says korban pesah is done b'zrika? Amar of Rizda, the bi Yosei Gilili, the Tanya, the bi Yosei Gilili. Omer, the music he says, et damam tizrok ala mizbeya. The blood of certain korbanot should be thrown on the mizbeya. Met chelbam tektir. So it says, damo lo neemar. It doesn't say damo. It's plural over here. It says, damam. Ela damam. Chelbo lo neemar. It doesn't say chelbo either. Ela chelbam. Now, even though this pasuk was only talking about bechor, but it says damam, so it must be it's including other korbanot that are like bechor, that are kadashim, kalim. And what are they? Limed al bechor, u maaser, u pesah. They put all three together, like we say every day in the Ezra Mekoman. A bechor, a maaser, a pesah. Kadashim, kalim. Shehem te'onim matan damim. They need blood, meaning on the mezbeah. Bemurim like a mezbeah. And therefore, what? And it says the pasuk, etamam tizrok. So may we learn that korban pesach is what? Bizri. Very good. Minalan the teronim yesod. Now, how do you know they have to throw it on the spot of the mizbeah that has a yesod, meaning either the north or the western side? Amar bin Azar atya zirika zirika meola. We have a gizra shabbat zirika zirika from ola. Ketibacha et damam tizrok ala mizbeah. Uchtibatam by the ola vizareku bene aharon akwanim et damo ala mizbeah sabib. Ma ola teuna yesod af pesach teuna yesod. Just like Korban ola. We make a gizra shaba from pesach to ola. Ma ola teuna yesod af pesach teuna yesod. How do you know ola needs yesod? So we didn't prove that. That's called Yesod Mizbah Ola. Alma Ola Tona Yesod. We the top Rashi, the Ola Gufa Minalam. Right. Right. It would jut, the, 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 the Yesod would jut out, it was on the north side and on the west side, and then it would jut out a little on the south side and the east side, a little, but not on the whole side. So, how do you know that you have to, the Ola gets Yesod? Right. It, it ate up on that side, the uh, Yesod, and Amma on the east side and on the southern side. Al Il Yesod. Why is it called Yesod Mizbaha Ola? Just say in Yesod the Mizbeah. And from there we see the fact that it refers to the Mizbeah of Yesod Mizbaha Ola. Ah, so we learn from there, but even what that person was not talking about Ola, it was about a hatat. But the way it said it, El Yesod Mizbaha Ola, we learned. Sha'ola, you put it on the Yesod. Big, uh, big, big, big Hadush in this Dirashai. Come on. El Yesod Mizbaha Ta'aseh Ola. That's where you put the Ola. 
any other Rashis we want to read over here? Read the, the bottom Rashis, Ela Damam, on the Amud Bet. Ela Damam, Alma, Ahari Nami Nishtamki. They made Al Hapesa, Maasa Behema, Shalom Asino Lahim Matan Dami, but Hora Ela Khan, speak his rock, the Loki Kitish. Unbelievable. So nowhere in the thread does it mention by Pesach how to sprinkle the blood. We only learn it from Bechor, and it says Damam by Bechor. So Damam is plural. So if we include things that are similar to it. Anything else? One I didn't understand uh, above on the uh, Okay, you want to call me later or you want to do it now? Whatever the rabbi says. Let's do it now. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you know the shape of the lechem apanim was like a pita bread. It was a, it was a, it was a rectangle. It was a, it was in a, in a, in a, in a form, and it was had two, two sides, right? And then it was flat on the bottom, and it was, it was hollow in, in between. So the walls were very thin. The walls were very thin. So therefore, right, so you're worried if you're going to stick the uh, bazichim, if it doesn't have a base, you're going to have to lean it against the side of the wall of the le'am panim. So that she's giving you, since the, since it was not, wasn't make like a hala, it was make like a hala, lean it, what's the problem? It wasn't made like that. It was made in, in a way where it's very narrow walls. That's what she's giving you the form of it. I read it inside. She'aya asu defanot, kemin teba, like a teba, a teba, which means like a rectangle. A, 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 a wall, a base, and then the wall on the other side. And it was open on both sides. It's open on both sides. My only question is, from here you see that the Hakamim did not have a problem of leaning a keli against the bread. Normally, Halakha says, you're not allowed to use the food as a, as a holder, which means if I have a piece of bread and I want to, I don't know, I want to prop my phone up, I want to watch something. I want to take a piece of bread and uh, stick my phone as a. I'm not allowed. It's bizayon, uh, and the pshat over here is it's only bizayon if it's the vrechol. But over here, I'm putting the bazikin, which is a mitzvah. It's a mitzvah to put the bazikin on the. So there, it's not a problem of bizayon ochlin if I'm using the ochel to prompt a, which you can. If I want to prompt my gemara up, I'd be allowed to take a piece of bread uh, to prompt my gemara up. Why? Because I'm doing a mitzvah. The only issue over here was you worry that the bread might. Might break. Okay, that's another story because the Ramapani must be shalem. But it sounds like if it wasn't that issue of breaking, you would have no problem to lean the baz- the bazakh against the against the bread. Why? Because you have to say it's sorek mitzvah. Baruch Hashem, because you came back for that. Baruch Hashem, Olam, Amen, Ve Amen. Kadish, Azakum Baruch. Kadish, Nine. Bring ten.